For this experiment, the hemolysate has already been prepared for you, but it's important that you know how it's made. We'll start with a bottle of defibrinated sterile sheep's blood. Take the bottle and invert it several times to resuspend the red blood cells. Using a sterile pipette, transfer 30 milliliters of the blood to a centrifuge tube. Now you want to balance the tube with a second tube filled with water. Once the tubes are balanced, you're ready to centrifuge. Centrifuging isolates the red blood cells in a pellet at the bottom. Place the tubes opposite each other in the rotor to balance them. If you don't, it could damage the centrifuge. After the first spin, you want to pour off the liquid layer and keep the pellet. Next, add 30 milliliters of cold saline to wash the red blood cells. Now swirl the tube gently to resuspend the red blood cells. Balance the tubes and do a second spin in the centrifuge. After the second spin, the red blood cells will have formed a pellet in the bottom of the tube again. Pour off the liquid and keep the pellet. Now add 15 milliliters of cold distilled water to the tube. The distilled water will cause the red blood cells to burst, releasing the hemoglobin into solution. Swirl the tube to resuspend the pellet. You should see the solution turn from a bright red color to a dark red color as the red blood cells burst. Balance the tube and spin it down again. After the third spin, pour the liquid layer into a tube labeled hemolysate and discard the pellet. The liquid layer now contains the hemoglobin and the pellet contains the cell debris from the broken red blood cells. Next, add 6 milliliters of the hemolysate to 45 milliliters of buffer. For this demonstration, we'll be using buffer pH at 7.4. Balance the tube and put it in the centrifuge for another spin. After the spin, pour the liquid into a tube labeled pH 7.4 and discard the pellet. Put the tube on ice and your hemolysate is now ready to use.